according to section 2d of the indian contract act consideration may be past present or future you have to see the wordings of the section what does it say when at the desire of the promisor the promise or any other person has done or abstained does or abstains proposes to do or abstain from doing anything to such act or absence is said to be making a consideration so consideration may be past present or future but according to english law past consideration is no consideration present consideration is good consideration then what is the difference between past consideration and uh, present consideration and future consideration past consideration means any action done and subsequently if that action is going to be rewarded then you say consideration has become past where a person does any service without expecting any reward on the other hand the person who got the service subsequently promises to reward the person who has rendered the service then in that particular instance we say consideration has become past where liability is incurred voluntarily and subsequently a promise is made to reward him that is what is known as past consideration on the other hand when a liability is incurred in pursuance of the promise that is what is known as present consideration so according to english law past consideration is no consideration supposing a person is actually walking on the embankment of the river kaveri a small girl was taking her bath suddenly there is a flash flood and it is actually the girl actually is about to meet with her watery grave she is not able to swim properly immediately the person jumps into the river who was walking on the embankment of the river he jumps into the river and delves deep into the water and then finally swims across the river and rescues the girl and he hands over the girl to the parent at that time the parent actually they promise to reward this particular gentleman who rescued their daughter now can this person file a suit in case those parents do not give him the reward now under english law it is not possible but under indian law it is possible because any service that has actually been done though apparently it looks for gratis but these people have promised to reward him he can actually enforce it by invoking the doctrine of estoppel because when once any person has admitted his liability and acknowledged to pay a certain sum of money then on the uh, representation he can file a suit and recover the money so this is what is known as the past consideration which is valid under indian law also under english law it is not valid under indian law it is valid so what is future consideration future consideration is liability is going to be incurred in pursuance of a promise to reward a person there is future i will pay you this much of money you finish this you take me to a city station i will pay you the money so the action is going to be in future only not at present so you must know the difference between past consideration present consideration and future consideration which is valid under indian law now the next important point which is normally asked invariably in professional examination as well as in university examination is a famous question contract without consideration void what are the exceptions explain now what is contract without consideration contract minus consideration is only an empty promise 
Abdul Aziz versus Mezam Ali Sahib, which we have narrated even in the beginning when we started uh, explaining conservation. So empty promises unsupported by conservation is not enforceable. It is only an empty promise. Where is the consideration for it? Ex nudo pacto, non oriter axio, that is what is out of a naked pact, no cause for legal action arises. Therefore, contract without consideration is not enforceable. Now, there are exceptions to it. What are those exceptions? The following are the exceptions. Where there is an agreement in writing between parties standing in nearest relationship with each other based on natural love and affection need not be supported by consideration. If a father bequeaths his property to his daughter or to his son out of love and affection, nobody can ask what is the consideration for it. It is only love and affection in between husband and wife, parent and the children. So there is no need for any consideration. So no consideration is needed. Where there is an agreement, even agreement need not be there. Where there is an agreement in writing, signed, sealed and registered between parties standing in nearest relationship with each other based on natural love and affection. On the other hand, a manager, I have come across cases, a manager in an office settles the entire property in favor of the stenographer when his legitimate wife is in existence. And the stenographer considers the settlement to be valid. She says, so look at this, the wording of the section, where there is an agreement in writing, signed, sealed and registered, based on love and affection. Natural love and affection is different from artificial love and affection or mere love and affection. This mere love and affection may be infatuation. On account of that, the officer, when the wife is legitimately, when he has got a wife for whom he has got to render lot of service by way of maintenance, by way of security and all that, if this fellow completely ignores his wife and settles a huge property worth about so much of rupees in favor of a stenogra stenographer, will not the wife question the validity of that settlement? So the court said that this settlement is not valid. Though it is in writing, it must be based on natural love and affection. There is a, yet another case where a husband was forced to execute a uh, settlement D in favor of a grumbling wife. That wife happens to be a little bit recalcitrant. He, she wanted this property somehow or other to be snatched from the husband's hand. So what happened? She made the husband, she, we are not able to live peacefully together, so you just uh, uh, settle this property. And she narrated, since uh, both of us are not in a position to lead a harmonious life, this property is settled by my husband in my favor and I asked the husband to mention all these things and uh, to execute the settlement. The court said it is not valid because any settlement or any property that is bequeathed by way of settlement or by a registered deed in writing must be based on love and affection. This is only to avoid the circumstances under which these people were living in, a, in an improper way, this uh, document was executed. Therefore, the court said this document is not valid, which is not paving the way for harmonious living of the husband and wife. So, that you must bear in mind. Then the second exception is, where there is a promise to compensate wholly or in part for any services already voluntarily done, such services which has benefited the promisor, then the promisor must be remunerate the promisee who has done service. Where there is a promise to compensate wholly or in part for any service already voluntarily done by the, prom by the promisor, by the promisee, I am sorry, by the promisee, 
then the promisor has been benefited by it and then he has got to reward it. So, uh, you must understand, even services may be voluntary, but it is not gratis. There is one section 69 which says, if any services has been done which is not apparently gratis, which has been done out of necessity, then the person who has derived the benefit must be, be, must be actually a reward, must give reward to the person who has incurred the liability and rendered the service. So here, humorously let us take one example, there is a hotel, in that hotel, the, there is a board that is displayed outside the hotel. Uh, the people are welcome to have their food in this hotel. Today is our special item. We are giving these are all the items, gulab jam and then basandi and all these masala dosa and variety of dosa, everything. If a person is able to take this much, he'll be able to have one more sweet free of cost and all that. So supposing lot of attraction, it is an invitation to an offer. They make a person to come and visit the hotel by doing all sorts of captivating advertisements. So the person goes there and you say you have invited us. So we have come here, we have taken our food. Okay sir, thank you very much for your hospital. You have got to pay the bill. Though the advertisement is there outside, you cannot escape without paying bill. So you must understand there are certain services which are not meant for gratis. The bus is flying from, from one place to another place. You get into the bus and then without paying ticket, how can he travel? Though it is actually flying everywhere, but you have got to pay. The moment you get into the bus, it is implied that you propose to travel and you propose to pay money for the travel. So, you must understand where there is a promise to compensate wholly or in part for any service already voluntarily done, on account of which the promisor has been benefited, he is under liability to compensate the other person who has rendered service. So consideration need not be there. Contract without consideration is void. There is an exception for that rule. Third rule is, where there is a time bought debt and where the debtor has made in writing to pay the time bought debt, then, though originally the consideration was there, subsequently it has become a time bought debt and it has lapsed, even then the creditor can enforce the suit against the debtor. A promise made in writing to pay a time bought debt need not be supported by consideration. When once he has actually given in writing to pay the time bought debt, automatically the promissory note gets itself renewed. Is it not? So, you must understand where there is a promise made in writing to pay a time bought debt, that is also enforceable. The next important point is about uh, this uh, consideration arising on account of agency. Supposing the principal appoints an agent to market his goods, now, the agent actually goes there and represents the business of the principal. Now, the agent may represent properly or improperly. Who will be liable for misrepresentation made by the agent? The principal will be vicariously, he will become liable. Therefore, there is an amount of risk in allowing the agent to project the business of the principal. He may do it properly or improperly as a consequence of which if any damage has got to be borne, it is only the principal who will become vicariously liable. Therefore, there is no need for consideration in a contract of agency. Likewise, there is no need for consideration in the case of surety contract. Who is paying the money to the debtor? The creditor pays the money to the debtor. How is it that the creditor pays the money to the debtor? He pays the money to the debtor on the ground of guarantee given by surety. It is only the guarantee given by the surety that makes the creditor to make him 
to advance the money to the debtor. Therefore, there is no need for consideration in a contract of guarantee. The very fact that the surety gives guarantee to the creditor, that itself is adequate consideration because he is incurring the detriment. The, in case the principal debtor does not pay the money to the creditor, automatically the creditor will file a suit against the surety. So therefore, this surety contract does not require any sort of consideration. Next important point which comes under exception is what is known as forbearance to sue. Forbearance means refraining from filing a suit. Supposing the creditor has advanced money to the debtor and the money has become due and payable to the creditor. Supposing the debtor requests, please do not file a suit. I will actually pay it. I will just undertake. I will give it in writing. Don't file a suit now. I will just within two months I will pay. Supposing he gains time and requests the creditor not to file a suit. This is what is known as creditor's act of forbearance. He actually refrained creditor refrains from filing a suit against the debtor. That itself is adequate consideration for balance to sue. Likewise, compromise of a disputed claim. There is a claim by the creditor as against the debtor for 5,000 rupees. They enter into a compromise and they settle the amount at 4,000 rupees. Now, what is the consideration for it? The very compromise deed itself is adequate consideration. There is no need for any other consideration. Compromise of a disputed claim also will be treated as consideration. So these are the exceptions that you should bear in mind when a question is asked, a contract without consideration is what? Set the exception. Where, number one, where there is an agreement made in writing, signed, sealed and registered and delivered by the one party to the other party based on natural love and affection need not be supported by consideration. Number two, where there is a promise to compensate wholly or in part for any services already voluntarily done on account of which the promisor has been benefited, there is no need for consideration. Third, where there is a promise made in writing to pay a time bought debt to the creditor by the debtor, that also need not be supported by consideration. Fourth point, in a contract of agency, the very fact that the principal allows the agent to project his business to outside party, that itself is adequate consideration for the principal because any act of agent will actually bind the principal. Then finally, in the case of contract of guarantee, where the guarantor gives guarantee to the creditor on account of which when the creditor advances the money to the principal debtor, if the principal does not, debtor does not pay the money back to the creditor, the surety has got to pay. That itself is adequate consideration. So, these are all things which will come under exception to the consideration. Now, next important point is that one has got to bear is, now consideration must be lawful and must be legal. Lawful consideration alone is enforceable. Look at section 10. All agreements or contracts, if they are made by parties, by free consent, by competent parties, for a lawful consideration and lawful object. Lawful consideration means any amount that is payable lawfully, legally, not any amount that is surreptitiously paid or given by way of corruption. It is tainted with illegal money, illegal gratification. Therefore, you must understand that any contract must be supported by lawful consideration. The next important thing that you have got to notice is, you see, any contract, illusory contract, consideration must not be illusory. Is it possible for you to make both the parallel lines to meet at a particular point? Parallel lines are only parallel. You cannot make them meet with each other. If there is an agreement by a doctor with the relatives of the parent, of the patient, with the relatives of the patient, that I will make the dead patient to become alive. Can there be an agreement like that? I will make the dead person to speak to you alive. 
This is not possible. It is impossible. There is one leading case under English law that is uh, the case of Stick versus Myri. In that case, the captain of the ship promised to divide the salary of the deserters. Deserters means a few people who happen to be the crew of the ship. They left the captain and then they refused to work, render their service. Then what happened? The balanced people, the residuary crew did the service because the ship has got to be taken to the shore. These people deserted their services and refused to render their service and on account of which they are known as deserters. Now, the captain of the ship promised to divide the salary of such deserters among the rest of the crew. If they worked the vessel home, the court held that they are not entitled for the sum as they are already under obligation to bring the vessel home. You must understand, though some of the deserters might have deserted and they may refuse to uh, render their service, but still the remaining crew, they have got to bring the ship to the shore. It is their liability. Therefore, it, they need not be remunerated apart from what has already been earned by them. Then, consideration must be distinguished from pre-existing legal obligation. What is a pre? What do you mean by pre-existing obligation? As I already told you, a policeman has got to search for the thief and recover the stolen properties. If the stolen properties are recovered and uh, the policeman hands over through the police station to the person who lost these goods, the person who lost the goods need not remunerate the policeman for rendering this service. This is a statutory service. Any service rendered by the government officer or public officer need not be remunerated. Why should you give remuneration to MPs and the MLAs when they are already under their responsibility to discharge their duties and all that? So there is no need. That becomes corruption for any lawful service that they are expected to do. Need not be remunerated by you by way of additional remuneration to them. So this is what is known as condition Ramachandra versus Kalura Zoo. In that particular case, what happened? There is a, an advocate who has a, appeared for a client. In that case, what happened? The advocate entered into a contract with the client that if I am able to succeed in that case, you have got to pay additional sum of rupees so much. The very purpose of engaging the advocate is to argue the case and succeed the case for which the advocate is entitled under the Advocates Act and he is entitled for the cost of it and all that as per procedure of the court. But here is an instance where the advocate digars. Digars means quite apart from the original engagement through which Vakalat has been filed. He actually enters into a contract with the client, in case I succeed in the case, you have got to pay me additional remuneration. When the client never paid the additional remuneration, the advocate filed a suit. The court said it's not valid. Already you are under pre-existing legal obligation to argue the case. The doctor is performing the operation in order to see that the patient is alive. Sometimes operation is successful, patient is not alive. So, supposing the doctor enters into a contract, supposing I perform the operation after receiving the remuneration and the patient is alive, you have got to pay an additional remuneration of so much. No, that is not valid. See, consideration must be distinguished from pre-existing legal obligation. That is how you should remember. So, these are all the various points that will come under exception. Now let us enumerate what are the exceptions. Number one, where there is an agreement made in writing between parties standing nearest relationship based on natural love and affection need not be supported by consideration. Where there is a promise to compensate wholly or in part for any service voluntarily done on account of which the promisor has been benefited need not be supported by consideration. Where there is a promise made in writing to pay the time bar debt by the debtor to the creditor need not be supported by fresh consideration. A contract of agency does not require a consideration because the very fact that the principal allows the agent to represent him in all his dealing with third parties 
that itself is an adequate consideration because the principal becomes vicariously liable then the next important exception is where the guarantee is given by the surety on account of which the creditor advances the money to the debtor the very fact that the surety has got to pay the money in case the principal debtor does not repay the money to the creditor that itself is considered to be adequate consideration these are all things compromise of a disputed claim becomes a consideration forbearance to sue becomes a consideration these are all the things then the next important thing is consideration must be distinguished from a pre existing legal obligation of which i told you just now so there is what is known as another sub topic which is applicable only in the, under english law accord and satisfaction accord is attempt to satisfy satisfaction is actual receipt of the amount accord and satisfaction is not applicable in india accord means attempt to satisfy satisfaction means execution of accord at a place where a person has to supply 10 apples such person instead of supplying 10 apples agrees to supply 30 lemon fruits his promise to supply lemon fruits is known as accord in order to complete the transaction by satisfaction he should have physically supplied the lemon fruits then only the accord is said to have been executed the 12th rule is under indian law promise may dispense with or reduce the whole or part of the claim payable by the promisor supposing the promisor has got to pay 1000 rupees for the loan which i have advanced he is prepared to advance only 800 rupees and the creditor also agrees and then it is left open to the creditor to waive receipt of 200 rupees balance he may say i waive this i forego this you pay me 800 rupees there is enough so this is the what is known as the section uh, uh, 63 says under indian law promisee can dispense with or reduce the whole claim that he owes from the promisee so this you have got to bear in mind